Welcome to Locked On Bulls. Remember the Locked On Podcast Network's where it's your team every day. That's Pat the Designer, host and creator of the Windy City Breeze. I'm Hayes, host and creator of Chicago Bulls Central. Pat, we got the Bucks coming in town tonight. Uh, Chris Middleton is out with this game. Uh, Caruso and uh, Javante Green are both listed as uh, questionable. <sighs> But what do you, what are you thinking? How are you feeling about this game coming into the night, brother? You know what? Normally, right, I would I would be a little more optimistic because the Bulls normally get up for these games, right? Mm. But the the injury, the injury concerns might be too much in this one. Uh, I think I think that's the, the the biggest problem that the Bulls have going into this, outside of all the other things, right? But like, listen, when we see the Bulls run the offense, when we see the Bulls play their best defense, it's usually versus these above five hundred teams. Um, it's usually versus the top teams in the NBA as well. So Milwaukee fits fits the bill on both of those. But I, I just I look at um I look at this game as how healthy are the Bulls gonna be, even if guys do play, and how much is that gonna add to the defensive intensity? Cause that's what it comes down to, right? Like if, if the Bulls are gonna compete in this game, it's gonna be just like last game, right? Like you're gonna see this thing finish out. What what was the last game? It finished out like 110 102 or something like that like it wasn't like we were putting up 130 in that mug i don't think so i think that that's pretty much the kind of game you need to beat the milwaukee bucks i think the bulls with zach levine being able to knock down his shot as of recent um have a couple of nice assets to go up against milwaukee but at the end of the day right like you're not gonna stop Giannis. how are you gonna defend everybody else Omar's not going to be able to do it. We already know Io's track record versus Drew Holiday. Um, and you don't even have Alice Caruso, or possibly, but more than likely uh, with concussion protocol, you don't, you're don't. you probably not going to have Alice Caruso to switch in there on Drew Holiday. That's going to be a big loss. It's going to be a big loss. Well, the savior, Kobe White, is still on the roster, and we know <laughs> with the hot Kobe White. Anything. If you pick Kobe White and Tony Bradley in the game, I'm telling you right now, bro, it's a dub. No, nah, yeah. um. No. All jokes aside, the, the the thing with this team that's concerned, we're well, not concerning that because we're way, well past concern, right? Yeah. We, we were well past the being concerned. But the thing with this team that's just wild is how like the the losses are what identify this team, right? Like it, like they the Bulls won three in a row. They had one loss, and the losses mean more to us than the wins because we don't believe who this team is when they win games because they haven't done it consistently enough for yeah. us to believe it. We believe the losses more than the wins right now. And that just shows you the sad state of where this team is and where it's gone, man. And um, I look at this uh, this game against the Bucks, and considering how they got outplayed against Houston, it would not surprise me at all for the Chicago Bulls to come in here, look like the playoff team that they've looked like at times, face the Milwaukee Bucks tough, win or lose, they just look like a more formidable team. But that's not enough anymore. Like the, the no. game in, game out thing isn't enough anymore. We need to see them start stringing some wins together. So, yeah, I always hope for a Chicago Bulls win, but I can't predict wins anymore because there's no there's no just continued level of play from this team. And it's just yeah. – it's a sad state, bro. It's a sad state. No, and I think I think that's why you have to and, – and Zach Levine said it, right? They, we took the Miami Heat lightly. Uh, which probably Houston means Rockets. they was out partying and drinking the night before for Christmas. Shout out to them. But uh, <laughs> he said they took the Miami Heat lightly, right? And I, bro, I think bro. That, it was the Houston Rockets, bro. You keep saying the Miami Heat. Why, why, why the heck did I say the Miami <laughs> Heat? We took the Houston Rockets. Like, why did I say the Miami Heat? Like, that, well, I, mean, I guess it tells <laughs> me what I think about bar? it. <laughs> Why'd I go with that bar? It wasn't that bad. Um, are you okay? Is everything okay at home? <laughs> bro, if you, I laughed at that for like five minutes, bro. I watched it like three times. I'm like, yeah, that's about, that's about accurate. That was one of your better tweets. That's, that's about accurate. Yeah. If you don't know what we're talking about, man, check out Twitter. We always got some good content back and forth on Twitter. But no, um, the, the Houston Rockets, right? Like they said, they took the Houston Rockets lightly. And, and when you take the Houston Rockets lightly, right? They're a young team that can come out and get a win. The thing is, you, you're not in a position to take those teams lightly, especially when you have a game like what we have coming up against Milwaukee, right? You have to take the wins where you can get them because mm -hmm. you're you're you falling behind in, in these standings. You've fallen behind. And not to say that you can't fight your way back into this, right? We've got a lot of teams on this schedule that look like we can compete with them and beat them and if we don't take them lightly. But the thing is, the Bulls always take teams lightly. We took OKC lightly. We've taken the Houston Rockets lightly. We took the Orlando Magic lightly. I, I don't know if y'all know this, right? But y'all y'all not winning enough games to be taking teams lightly, right? Like, that, if you five games thing. above five hundred, I'm not hurt. I'm not hurt when you lose the Houston, <laughs> bro. Like that, and that's that's the biggest thing is like 
to say that, to have to identify that, to say we took them lightly, who are you to take any? You are five games below 500. There's no lightly for you at all. You were trying to Games save your season. You lightly, bro. <laughs> like, like, come on, fam. Like, that's, like right now, and I, and I said this over on Central, I know I was frustrated when I said it, but I mean it. The, the Bulls couldn't take a high school pickup game lightly right now. Yeah. You can't. You're fighting for your livelihood out here, bro. And, and I, I mean, that's that's really what it is right now with this team. I mean, I, I don't know. Right, like when I look at this Milwaukee game, do I think the Bulls can score enough to win? Yeah, I do. You still got Booch, you still got Zach, you still got Demar. Do I think that the Bulls can stop anybody on the other side without DJJ, Javante Green, and Alice Caruso? I don't. And herein lies the problem. I shouldn't be relying on DJJ, Alex, Car maybe Alex Caruso a little bit. DJJ and Javante Green to be the tipping point for the Chicago Bulls team defensively. Alex Caruso, I get. It's what he hangs his hat on. It's what he, he goes out there and does six-man for you. He can be a six-man of the year if he continues to play at, at that level of play, right? You got to get that defensive rating a little bit higher. but And he's starting right now, so that also hurts that chance as well. But, I mean, like, if Caruso was doing what he normally did off of the bench, we'd, we'd love it, right? But I'm relying on guys that are, I mean, really, on other teams, what? End of the bench role players? To be yeah. the tipping point for our defense, and and th that is one of the biggest. And I and this isn't to knock on Javante or Derrick Jones Jr. No, not they, at all. But the fact of the matter is, is that our season has come down to where we're relying on them to set the tone, energy wise and defense wise, is a is a is a perfect microcosm of the issues with this team. Yeah, it might that might have sounded like a slight high put it right. It's like not at all. Even though I just called y'all into the bench players on other teams, it's not what I mean. What I mean is that your leaders aren't taking the lead defense at all. Yeah. At all. And I, well, I, Zach maybe a little bit more, but it's it's just not enough, right? And it's not consistent enough. Zach does it when he wants to, right? And here's the thing: Zach's gonna be guarding who? Uh, maybe Drew Holiday at times. Maybe Wes Matthews, right? Like Grayson. You, great. I, I mean, like, listen. That yeah, I, 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 I love that. I love that Zach wants to, uh, uh, you know, take that lead defensively and be the focal point on that. But not for nothing. I'm not worried about Wes Matthews going off of forty. Yeah, the Pat defensive Collinson, focal point be, needs to be stepping yeah. up on the best player on the team. Uh, all I can say is, is like, and what uh, uh, interesting stat came out last night. I'm gonna throw this to you before we get off this segment. In games where where Demar scores thirty points or more, the Bulls are two and nine. What does that say to you? It, it tells me that more times than not, he's trying to put the team on his back, um, and that the rest of the team just kind of follows suit. It, it it tells me more times than not that when he's doing those games, when he's having those games, right? We know how Demar gets to thirty, right? Like Demar's yeah. not getting to thirty inside the, the the scheme of the offense. Demar's getting to thirty. By being DeMar DeRozan, going out one on one, playing his game, knocking down shots. Tells me everything that we've said on this show. When you're not running a team brand of basketball, you're not going to win. You're running a 2005 style offense in 2022, and you're surprised that it doesn't work. Yeah. And that, that's the problem. And when you try, and here's the, here's, here's the part that's the most annoying when you run the 2022 style of offense, you win three games in a row, and you look like a real offense, and you, actually look like a competent basketball team and the players that we've said are struggling this season don't look like they're struggling anymore and you're young guys yeah. so i i think that that's the, the biggest thing for me is when i'm looking at demar's game yeah i know demar can go get 30 but it doesn't mean i think what it does is that and and it, it really tells you right like a, a lot of people have always said who's the leader of this team who's the who's the focal point who's the who's the guy right zach should be the guy demar should be the guy whatever it is it tells you because the rest of the team just follows suit with whatever DeMar does. When DeMar goes one-on-one, -on -one, they don't keep running offense. Everybody start going one-on-one. -on -one. Listen, to me, we don't have a the guy because we don't have the wins. We got a guy. We just got guys. We just got guys. We just got guys. We, we got some got guys. guys. We got, got you got to have at least, it, by the rules, you have to have at least 15 guys on your team. We and do have 15 guys. And, but none of them are the the, the guy. <laughs> Sometimes 13, actually, because we be sending a lot of people down to, to <laughs> the Windy City Bulls. Bro, 
Fam, do they just got a shuttle that's taking Marco and Dalen back that they get on after every game, yeah, it's, bro? Yeah, it's not. Yeah, absolutely, bro. They just <laughs> hop right on and get on the shuttle right to the hotel. Um, but next up, we're going to be talking about the Bulls and if they were to go into a trade, how do we? What what do we see as the most likely trade assets that could be moved? Um, but first, I got to talk to you guys about prize picks. Now, I don't know about you guys and how often you play daily fantasy, but. Price Picks makes daily fantasy really easy. How does it work? You pick two to six players, and if they'll go on to score less than the prize pick projections, you can win up to 25 times your money on any entry. No competing against other people. It's just you versus the projections available. Price Picks offers projections on any sport that you watch. This includes NBA, NFL, MLB, NHL, PGA, college football, men's college basketball, women's college basketball, soccer, WNBA, esports, and more. Entries can be made in 60 seconds or less. It's that easy. Safe and fast withdrawals, currently operational in over 30 states and Canada. Download the PrizePix app or go to prizepix.com to sign up and play daily fantasy sports. First-time users can receive 100% instant deposit match up to $100 with promo code Locked On. If you dis- deposit $100, PrizePix will give you $100. If you deposit $50, PrizePix will give you $50. Don't forget to enter promo code Locked On at sign up for instant deposit match of up to $100. We want to thank you guys for making Locked On Bulls your first listen every day. For your second listen, make sure to check out Locked On Sports Today, the biggest stories around the sports world in 20 minutes or less, plus instant reaction, game recaps, and Locked On's Take It A Day. Locked On Sports Today, available on YouTube and wherever you get your podcasts. All right, Pat. So, you know, it's common conversation around the basketball world right now to see what are the Chicago Bulls going to do with this roster? Are AK and Eversley going to decide to blow it all up? Are they going to retool? Are they going to do some minor re- rejiggering of things? Are one of the big three possibly going to be on the move? God forbid, even two of them. We saw a couple of years ago at the trade deadline, AK and Eversley in their first year here be very active. Now, that was a completely different situation. They moved a lot of young pieces to bring in veteran pieces to try to build a competing playoff team to convince Zach Levine to re-sign. What do you think this Bulls team is more than likely to do as far as retool, rebuild, or whatever? And then where do you rank those trade assets that the Bulls have of, of who's more likely to move? Or you can even do say, who do you want to see moved uh, more so than the other players? Go ahead, Pat. I'm going to be honest with you, right? There's a lot of players I could see that logically should be moved. Okay. I think you could move Alex Caruso and get some nice assets back. Um, I think that you could package Caruso and Kobe White and get a nice player back, maybe a power forward, uh, which is something that we need on this team, or, or at least uh, somebody that's a little bit bigger that can go down there and rebound. I don't know if you need a, a specific power forward per se, but just another guy that can actually be a little bit of a rim protector. Mm-hmm. Um I could see Javante get moved. I could see, like, there's a lot of trades that I could see happening. But let's be 100% about this. Is AK likely to do any of these moves? <laughs> Is AK <laughs> likely to go down any of these paths? Is AK likely to move? Because he's told you his plan, and that plan has not changed, no matter how many times Bulls fans have screamed at the top of their lungs for change. Continuity. And he has doubled down on it by re-signing Billy Donovan. Or extending Billy Donovan, I should say. Continuity. Zach Levine's got 215 over five. Continuity. DeMar DeRozan's not going anywhere. Teams are calling. And when they asked him about it, he said, hey, uh, we think that when we're healthy, we're a playoff team. I I, I mean, that could be very well possible. We're not going to be healthy anytime soon. Well, that's that's the thing, right? I'm like, what are we talking about healthy? Are we just talking about without Lonzo or with Lonzo, right? <laughs> like, because without Lonzo, even 100% healthy, you should be a playoff team, but the heart of your leaders on this team is in question. So, right, like the, the trades that I guess I would like to see them possibly make, I wouldn't be mad if, if they moved AC and packaged that because I think that you get a legit big man back, which I think you need on this team. I think the part that would piss me off is I think it would be another trade with uh, Orlando for one of their bigs and um, either either Bobo and or Mo Bamba. And probably not Bobo, by the way, at this point as well, because yeah. he's like balling right now. So yeah, probably Mo Bamba. And uh, you could have had that. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm going to be real with you. Trade deadline coming. 
I'm fully setting myself up to be upset. Uh, I'm fully setting myself up to be upset. Trade deadline coming, a hundred and ten percent, bro. This, uh, this trade deadline is either going to be one of the most exciting uh, that the Bulls in Bulls recent history, or it's going to be complete and utter nothing. And I can't wait to see how Bulls fans react once it's like the Bulls do something like, oh yeah, the Bulls move Tony Bradley and and Derrick Jones Jr. for I don't even know somebody off the top a of my head a second round pick in cash consideration <laughs> a second round pick in cash consideration yeah, nothing help and Bulls fans are going to be like this is not the trade we <laughs> hey, bro I'm up here 100 because here's the thing everything logically that I think as a trade would go down mm -hmm. it, it goes against AK's plan but, but not only that the thing that I think that Bulls fans have to come out well fans and this again we're we're a Bulls podcast we focus on Bulls fans I'm yep. not trying to single you guys out every fan base does this not just Bulls yeah. but Bulls fans zero in on thinking oh we can just trade these things we don't want and get stuff we want back no if the Bulls do make that major trade that some people want that means that a player that people love like a Caruso like a Javante like a like a Demar like a, no, I'm probably not to the level of Zach I don't know if they make that level of trade but it more than likely means that one of those players are going to be on their way out. This this mindset that some fans have that like, oh, well, we can send Kobe, we can send Derrick Jones Jr. and throw in Tony Bradley, and we can get such and such back. Anthony sell, Davis coming back. They'll Got sell it. low on that. It's like, no, bro, that's not how trades work in the NBA. And guess what? Any Most teams that are going to trade right now for the Chicago Bulls are going to be the top, the, the teams above us that want to solidify their championship run, meaning yep. a Javante, a Atlas Caruso, a Vooch. They're way more likely in, in that case to be moved because those are the desirable, A, smaller contracts, right? Those are the, So uh, a team that's already con uh, considerably into the luxury tax can yep. easily make a trade for a Javante Green considering his contract's like what? I think it's like 1.7, something yeah, like yeah. that. Atlas Caruso... His contract is still very reasonable for what what you what he brings and the energy he brings. And so I do think that Bulls fans that think that the trade deadline is going to come and go and the Bulls are going to just trade the players that aren't performing to the level that they want them to or just trade the players that they don't like as much and we're going to get something considerable back, It's not, you can't have it both. We're either going to trade some of the players that we don't really need, use, or whatever that have become redundant in a way, and we're going to get something back, like a second-round pick in cash considerations, maybe an extra low first, depending on who you trade, or we're going to make a bigger move, and that means that Alice Caruso is going to be on that trade block probably. Yeah, I mean, well, not on the trade block, but may be involved in that level of a deal. Now, what I what I will say is, right, like a Vooch, a Vooch name is an interesting one, and I think mm -hmm. that you might see that be more of a viable option. I know a lot of people – there's there's literally just two two groups of fans in Send Bulls Nation. Send them a level. That's it. There's, yeah. there's, there's, there's trade Vooch. Vooch has a good game. Y'all want to trade Vooch. Vooch has a bad game. Trade Vooch. Vooch has a good game. It's just it's – a, it's a circle. Um, The one thing that I think that you might possibly see is that – you move Vooch because Vooch might be able to get you a low-level first-round pick, and you might be able to get a player out of it as well. That's the only thing I think I can see because, you know, that that I don't know how that relationship is, if there's a problem or not, mm -hmm. but that was supposed to be a deal that was done in training camp. And um, yeah, I mean, Vooch has talked about He says that he thinks that the Bulls are trying to basically – see how the team goes before giving them that extension. But yeah. to your point, and, ex and it may be Vooch and Caruso. It's not going well. It's not going well. <laughs> Vooch, Vooch and Caruso may be your best bets. Caruso uh, with an average salary of $9.2 million, um, and, and uh, Vooch with the 22, that's $31 million in spending power. So, I mean, I, I'm just saying that I just need people to prepare the fact that if this trade go, if a trade goes down into a major one, it's going to be at least one player that we all really like that's going to be involved in that trade. I, I think I think more than likely Vooch. I don't I, I just I don't see them giving up Demar. I oh just, yeah, I don't um, see. Like, I don't well, see the last report we got is that Demar and Zach are untouchable. So yeah, I, I don't see them giving up Demar yeah. at all. And I, then a team too. You people got to remember as well. Like a team trading for Vooch's expiring contract. Maybe it's not Vooch and Caruso depending on the level of deal. But then I wouldn't be surprised if it's Vooch and Javante. Because the, a team is going to want more. Well, considering on what team it is, like I mean, there's a possibility that it could just be Vooch, but we'll see. All right, here's here's my meathead trade, real quick. Okay. Before we get All right, meathead, meathead, meathead trade. Me, we got to get a meathead sound. Uh, 
I, I love that you're looking for one to see what you got. That that ain't it. That ain't it. That ain't. Yeah, I'm gonna have, I'm gonna have to add something to the board for that. We're we gotta meet, we gotta meet. we gotta make one. Like, we yeah. gotta get like a meet it take the day. <laughs> Hold on. I, oh wait wait. Then I can do that. Give me one second. Okay, now now Satan's talking to me. That's <laughs> fine. I'm Jesus. the devil anyway. Go ahead, bro. <laughs> um, I would say expiring contract. Now they've talked about wanting a lot of picks, but I think a little bit of stability. Expiring contract of Vooch and Alex Caruso. Send it over there. Send me back Jordan Clarkson, and I'll take uh, I'll take uh, 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 Walker Kessler along with him. Give me the young big. I'm not mad at that, but the thing I don't, is, I, the money doesn't work at all. You got to make something to make the money work. I, I think the know, money actually does. Work, no, the money does work. I believe Clarkson makes a Clarkson's pretty Clarkson's making though. 19 million, I think. Right? Nah, they'd have to throw somebody else. Oh no, Kessler might. No, Kessler's outside of that. He's outside of that range because he was. So a, Clarkson's making tw it's it's tw uh, no 13.3 million. So yeah, you they'd have to throw Vanderbilt. I take Vanderbilt. Vanderbilt, uh, Vanderbilt, Kessler, and Jordan Clarkson for uh, Alice Caruso. Who did you say, Alice Caruso and who? Alice Caruso and Vooch. <laughs> Ooh, I, bro, not, I would not be mad at that trade at all. That, that's a haul. Um, not, not, not listen, I don't know why Utah would do it. But, but still. <laughs> but what I was going to say is the last thing that came out, though, is that Utah's actually talking contract extension with Jordan Clarkson. Yeah, no, they're not getting out of Jordan yeah, Clarkson. So. That's why I said, meet here, take it today. That's that's the one where you just throw it out. It's like, listen here, this is what they're going to do. They're going to get this trade. They're going to send that. We're going to get an all-star and a young player for an old man and a six-man. <laughs> that's how that goes, dog. Oh, man. But, hey, um, as we're going to keep this thing going here, man, appreciate you guys for tuning in. As always, we do got to tell you guys about BetOnline.net. BetOnline is your number one source for all your sports betting info, stats, news, and analysis. Get the latest odds and trends for every professional and amateur league out there. From pro football to college bowl season to basketball and World Cup, we've got it here at BetOnline.net. If you love sports podcasts, you can even find those at BetOnline as well. We're the fastest and easiest way to get your betting info. Head to the website today and use your mobile device to learn more. BetOnline, it's where the game's. All right, Pat. Last topic of the day, and one of the biggest concerns that I've had with Billy Donovan's coaching, kind of not just just it's not just his coaching, but like the direction of this team. The bet on continuity, I, the way that I looked at it was always basically saying like, yeah, we're hopefully with another year together, we're all playing better. We're playing better as a unit. We've learned each other. The coaching staff has learned the players a little bit more. But it always was a sign or, 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 or partially a bet on the young players either taking that next step, making a leap or whatever to really get the Bulls to a new higher level. We haven't seen them used in a way to me that has even put them in a position to necessarily develop the skill set that they already had, much less develop any new skills. But I want to hear, I've been very vocal on that my, on my side. I want to know how you feel about it. How do you feel about the development of the younger players on this roster? I, I think that there has been development. I think that with the team that we have, it's a lot harder to see it with the lineups that we're throwing out there. And what I'll mm -hmm. say by that is I I've seen the moments where P will is being aggressive and he, he looks like he can score any bucket that he wants to. That is development. Mm -hmm. um, the part that it takes away from him is how often is he getting an opportunity to go score a bucket by actually putting the ball in the air, right? I think he's doing a little bit more uh, shot over 10 shots for the second time this season in the last game out. Uh, so that was good to see. You know, hopefully we see him shoot more than 10 shots a game more often. Uh, also uh, hit that hit that metric, uh, didn't he? Uh, what do you have, 12 points in that game? Yep, Something, like that? Something like that. 12, 12 points. points. Uh, he had a nice little stat line. I'll, I'll pull it up. Go ahead. Yeah, you know, whenever he shoots over whenever he shoots over 10 shots a game, he, he actually can score the basketball. It's crazy to hear. Um, but I, I think that the thing is um, we're seeing the development more so in the lineup that is on the back end, right, where – Kobe White, uh, who finally got to have an offseason, is also on a lineup where he is king on the court. 
When he gets in, the ball's in his hands. When he gets in, he has the green light. He has the ability to attack. He has the ability to put up shots. He has the ability to and, and now, right? Like I think the thing that most Bulls fans like is we're seeing him grow defensively. We're seeing him grow uh, uh um it, with his instinct, with his basketball IQ, different things like that. So I don't want to say that there's been no development under Billy Donovan. I just think that right when you have this kind of team. It, it's to me, I, I don't know. It's not realistic for me to think that everybody's going to put up 15 shots. Well, that's the thing. And you say there's been development. All I take from what you said isn't development. To me, that just means that they are having more opportunities or maybe being a little bit more comfortable, but that's not necessarily development. Um, that, how I see it. I'm not knocking on, on how you view it, but like you, it's hard to have a player that is, has shown you, I have point forward skill set and you don't allow them, you don't run any offense for them. Yeah. It's hard to develop a player in that. It's hard to let them not only get comfortable in what they're able to do in the league with their natural ability, yeah. much less fine-tune that at an NBA level when they're not getting that opportunity. Io DeSumo, we've seen, when he when he, when he he pushes the pace, tries to get to the lane, he's pretty effective. Having an offseason so far, the season especially defensively, yeah. But he doesn't get very many opportunities to do that. And then, hell, Dalen Terry's barely able to crack the rotation. Billy Donovan doesn't know who the heck Marco Simonovich is. So, yeah. like, Kobe White – now, I'll give you Kobe. Kobe with his first – he's developed. But Kobe's when the you, only one with the opportunity to, right? Right now, right? That's what, that, that's what I'm that's saying, right? That's what like, I'm getting at, though. That's yeah, what I'm yeah, getting yeah. at. They so haven't had the opportunity. No, yeah, and, and I think that – but I, I think that, right, like, why I think what I expected from Patrick Williams it, for me is more shots, right? And taking more of a role, taking some of that time away from DeMar DeRozan, having DeMar DeRozan on your team just might not, right? Like, I think, I think we all thought coming into this season, DeMar was going to have that, that year where he's like, all right, I showed y'all I can still play. Now I want the young guys to big up and I'm going to be the veteran that sort of takes this backseat role and comes out here and puts up my 22 to 24 a game and does what the team needs for me to win because now I got the team around me to help because I had to show the load last year. And DeMar mm -hmm. was like, hey, I'm back. Give me the ball. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I think with the team that oh, we have. Billy, you ran an offensive play. That's cute. Give me the ball. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, like, legit. Like, and, and I think the thing is, right, like, I see that Patrick Williams can play inside of the system when the system's yeah. working. Io DeSumo looked good inside the system when we're running the system. Um, Zach Levine always looks good inside of the system. When we're, I think Zach Levine's a better player inside the system than he is trying to be a one-on-one -on -one player. Hold on, that first step was quick the other day. I will say that, bro. If you take anything away from that game in Houston, Zach was blowing past some dudes. Bro, it's like, I think people forget just how the combination of strength and speed from Zach Levine is a dangerous when he's trying to take people off the dribble and get to the lane. He he's talking about like he was talking about uh how he he basically felt like or at least he was talking with Stacy when I rewatched the game he said it that he ba he felt like he finally is getting his speed back. He felt like mm -hmm. he got the jump and he got the strength back but he didn't have his speed back. Now he's feeling like he got his speed back. I mean, dog, listen. I forgot how fast dude is. Like he he blew past a couple of dudes, and I was like, "Hey, y'all still back at the three point line, bro? Like you're not supposed to be there." <laughs> but I mean, honestly, right? Like if you're if and and I think that goes back to our last conversation. It's hard to say, right? Like I don't think Demar Derozan's going to be traded because I think they want to roll with continuity and they want to roll with guys that are going to be able to put the ball in the bucket. But I don't believe that you're going to see these guys take that step that you believe in. That AK, like he said, this year, these guys are going to take the step. I believe in Patrick Williams. I believe in Iota Sumo. You, I don't think they can take that step that you think they're going to be able to take with DeMar DeRozan taking all the shots, with Zach Levine taking all the shots, with Vooch taking all the shots. Like, really, who else? Do we, and, and at the end of the day, on this team, those are the dudes you want taking the shots. So it's 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 tough for me. Well, that's I the thing. You say that they are developing, the but... I don't think that they're going to be able to show it as much, showcase it as much. Well, that's you say that those are the people that you want taking the shots. We are five games below five hundred. I don't know if that's the case anymore. Well, I mean that's that's up to AK. That's yeah, I mean that's, that's the yeah, yeah. honestly right. Like for us, for Bulls fans, it, I I think right. Like I told y'all, I watched Demar Derozan single handedly dismantle the offense Billy Donovan built. Like literally, seventy eight percent of the game, we ran this offense versus the Hawks. It looked great, and then. Like all of a sudden, I was just like, "Why is he? Why is he going one on one? Why is he going one on one?" And it happened like ten plays in a row. I was just like, "Why is he going one on one? We don't need this right now." 
And it, it took the Bulls out of rhythm offensively, took them away from their game. And I think the thing is, right, we – not to say we have a young team because we don't, but I think that we have a team that if you disrupt what they are comfortable doing at that moment, they'll go back to what they were comfortable doing before. And DeMar at times disrupts what they're comfortable doing at that moment, I think. But DeMar's probably going to be here. I hate to tell you that. DeMar's probably going to be here. And that's probably going to be the kind of offense you see. So I don't know if you'll see that that step that we thought we hoped we would see from P. Will. I don't know if we'll see. Io's growth is a little different. Io's regressed a little bit. That that one's a that one's a tough one. I think Io gets opportunity. I think Io just be uh, Io's I, I having a little sophomore slump. But outside of that, like like I said, the one person that's got opportunity looks great. <laughs> It's it's exactly it's that's so it right there. Just, I mean, just it, it just flip it, that up, it, right? It, it just it's so it's so frustrating because it's like, all right, cool. You got one guy looking good. How many games is that one in us? Two. We're 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 two for nine when he scores thirty points. But guess what? Even more concerning stat: when when Demar Derozan takes more than twenty shots, we're five and fifteen. That's bad, bro. Like that at the end of the day, you the, the, the results are the results. You can argue with me about yeah. how all that all day, but and not you, I just mean in general. I'm not saying yeah. you you are, but like it's it's something to that. There's too much stats and analytics out there to show that this Bulls team is not successful when when they go the heavy one on one. But we can identify it, but if 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 they don't, it doesn't matter. I'll take it a step further. I think it's about when DeMar does it. Right? Mm, that's we normally great. We normally see that at the end of the first half, and that's usually the times. Or I'm sorry, at the beginning of the first half, as or, uh, at the beginning of the second quarter, um, and then kind of at the end of first halves, right? And that's usually the time where we see the Bulls kind of struggle out the gate. They don't get the the shots that they want. They're not getting great shots. They're missing a lot of shots. Different things like that. And when the Bulls go out of the first half. With a lead, they're eight and zero this season. Not anymore. Oh, they're eight and one. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we're eight and one now. That's still good though. Mm-hmm. When we leave the first half with a lead, we're eight and one. Something at that time slot that is a very consistent piece on the court that's trying to get his usually leads us to being kind of out of position. And it's not all on Demar in those situations, but. I think that that's kind of where Billy Donovan is giving DeMar the green light to say, hey, we, we can afford it here. Go ahead and just try and get off. And that might be the switch that needs to come. Yeah. Oh, it's tough, man. dog. It's tough out here. It's tough out here. Yeah, it's 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 we're in such a unique situation. Like I said over on Central, this team is broken. This franchise is broken in many ways. Now, it can still be fixed. I don't know if it's going to, like, it, it, the chances of it happening this season become less and less likely as it keeps going on. And, um, man, I just, we'll see what happens with this team, man. I Like, I, I won't be surprised if they come out tonight against Milwaukee and look really good. But other than that, that future, the outlook of this team, bro, it's just, it's going to be, AK and Eversley got, they got to earn their money this season, bro. Yeah, we'll see, though. We'll see, right? Because, uh, do they? <laughs> here's, uh, here's, here's the three things we know. This team's probably not getting changed that much. Mm-hmm. Billy Donovan's going to be here. Mm-hmm. The Reinsdorfs aren't firing AK and everything. <laughs> and they're not firing themselves. <laughs> so. Well, uh, life's got to do that. But anyway, hey, let's get up out of here, man. Uh, appreciate you guys for tuning in and rocking with us for another episode, as always. Follow us on everything at Locked on Bulls. You can follow me on everything at Pat the Designer. Appreciate y'all for showing love. <laughs> You can follow me at CEO Hayes, at CEO H A I Z E. And thank you for making Locked On Bulls your first listen today. Now make Locked On Sports today your second listen. Peter Bukowski brings you the biggest stories from around the sports world in 20 minutes. Get the analysis and opinions before anyone else with our local and national experts and insiders. Locked On Sports Today podcast available on YouTube and wherever you get your podcasts. This is Locked On Bulls. That's Pat the Designer. We out this mug. Peace, y'all. Peace.